Hey, I'm here. Sorry about that. Um, was in the middle of a conversation uh, with someone that I didn't want to stop. Oh, I look horrible. I didn't put in any makeup this morning. <laughs> oh, but that's why I love you folks, because you accept me who the way that I am and who I am. So, um, but hey, welcome. Um, it's been a long week, a great week. Um, my husband was so amazing to me on my birthday week, I tell you. Um, we, uh, we got a chance to visit my aunt. We got a chance to uh, go out for uh, supper with a good friend of ours and his family that we met for the first time down in Sioux Falls. And um, we got to see his family, his mom and his dad and a couple of his brothers and their family and nieces. And um, we got to spend a whole day and a half just on our own going thrift store shopping and antiquing and um just oh it was just absolutely wonderful and you know he hates that he'd rather be home working but he gave up um almost a whole week um for me so um praise the lord i'm just so blessed i'm you know i'm not lucky it wasn't coincidence that i met him i'm just blessed the Lord led me to him. So, but welcome everybody. Um, let's see here now. Um, let's start out with, um, let's start out with doo -doo -doo, uh, at some acts of kindness here. Um, so yesterday, I went to a class at Sharon Lutheran Church in uh, Grand Forks, um, and the speaker was absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh, she um, she was just so down to earth, so interesting, and um, you know, for the life of me, this is horrible. I can't remember her name, um, but anyway, she is a professor. Um, that actually teaches um, on how to preach and how to keep your folks um, attentive during your message and not putting them to sleep. And Oh, I just loved her. She was so full of the Holy Spirit. But anyway, at this Sharon Lutheran Church, I've seen some things that I'm going to be bringing to the <coughs> attention of my new church starting Monday um, for kids. Um to um, bring them to church, um, bring your babies to church. Don't worry about if they make noise. But anyway, I just thought that was neat, so I picked up some of that. Um, and um, so let's see here. Now, hang on a second. I got to find my acts of kindness here. Do, do, do. Oh, and then another thing they had kind of relating to acts of kindness, is they had stuffed animals there, and they had a, um, a little note on there uh, attached to each stuffed animal, and it said, this bear has been among the congregation of Sharon Lutheran Church in Grand Forks, North Dakota. It has heard the word, read, prayers, prayed, praises sung, and sermons preached. It has been loved by Sharon and has soaked in God's love. Now it comes to you with blessings of worship and love. And they just told you to take one if you knew of somebody that needed one. I thought that was just really awesome. So um, one person, well, we might as well, while I'm looking here. Um, one person we I'm asking prayers for is one of my confirmants, uh, Trinity Olson. Um, she's just a blessing. And she has a twin brother, brother um, Tucker. <coughs> they both got confirmed on the 23rd of April. And um, anyway, she, her whole life, um, has had stomach problems. She's had that, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but is slick or Islick vomiting. And anyway, uh, long story short, they found out that because she was a preemie, 
that her intestines were not in the right place. And so with that, they were affecting other stuff in her stomach and all that. And she had surgery yesterday. And um, I, I got a message from her mom this morning. Um, I was going to go visit her yesterday, but <coughs> she was um, just got out of surgery in the afternoon. It must have been long surgery. And then she was sleeping, and her mom said that she's been pretty much on and off sleeping ever since. Um, and so... Anyway, I would truly appreciate prayers for Ta uh, Trinity Olson and her whole family because poor Tanya mom, you know, I mean, she is going through all of this as well in the family. So please send prayers out um, to them. And then um, I'm asking for prayers for Brady um, Peshek. Let's see. Um... Let's see. A tire blew up. Dirt and tire pieces hit him in the face and the eyes. Um, and there was, uh, um, it was said that it was quite bad. Um, but I just got a text from someone here that says, um, I believe it's somewhat better. They went to a doctor in Fargo for a second opinion. That doctor told them the doctors in Devil's Lake were doing exactly what he would have done, so they'll just follow up in Devil's Lake. So um, that's good. I don't know the prognosis or anything, but I know um, that he needs our prayers. Um, for those of you that don't know him, he's a he's a young dad, husband, um, great guy. So please keep him in your prayers for that. Um, okay, and then... Um, prayer or acts of kindness later this morning at menards i used a flat cart to get six large garden bag products a younger gentleman that was doing his own shopping placed mine on the cart for me as i was finished checking out he was too and he offered to put them in my car as i thanked him i said you can go home and tell them you did a random act of kindness for a widow lady today it made me smile thinking about how much easier it is to be kind and thankful. You know, there's just so much little stuff like that that goes around that we could like honestly just talk about all the acts of kindness forever. Um, it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to cost money, you know. So my new church had these books and I have two of them and I'm going to take a peek at them and and uh, try to read um, one every day. Let's see. Got to figure out how this book works. I haven't really. Uh... Oh, okay. Well, I, we'll just do this today till I get a better a chance. But here's just a few suggestions. Practice random acts of kindness. Buy a roll of brightly colored stickers and stick them on kids' shirts as you walk down the street or in a mall or in a store or in a restaurant, wherever. Now, I can see my friend from Minnesota doing that for sure. I love that. I, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Okay. Um, let's see. Make a list of things to do to bring more kindness into the world and have a friend make a list too exchange lists and do one item per day for a month spend a week just being aware of things in nature that befriend you now that's an act of kindness for you and one that i need to practice and i am really hoping to do that once i get up at my new church oh i love this one open the phone book close your eyes select a name at random and send that person a greeting card oh um, hold a random acts of kindness party where everyone tells the stories of kindness in their life. Walk around with the Instamatic camera, well, which we don't need to do anymore with your cell phone camera, and take people's picture. Oh, that one won't work. Forget it. Um, bring a little beauty into not-so-beautiful places. 
drop off a geranium plant at a police station or a cutting from a house plant to your local fire station. Love it! When someone is trying to merge into your lane in traffic, let them in. And why not smile and wave while doing it? So, anyway, hey, this is going to be a fun book. I got to, I have to look at that a little bit more. Okay, so, um, with that, let's get rolling and let us pray. Dear Father, we know that we tend to complicate things but we truly want to enjoy childlike simplicity. Please help us grasp how good you are and how willing you are to help us if we will only ask. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And that prayer goes along with our message today. So um, some of you might remember that on Monday I start my new call. Um, about, uh, oh, what would it be? I have two churches. One of them is probably about 30 or so miles. The other one's about 40 or so miles. Um, but I'm going out of my comfort zone because when we make changes, especially at like my age, um, when we try something different, we go out of our comfort zone. And so many times we don't want to go out of our comfort zone. And we're gonna talk about that today. Um, and so you'll probably hear some of this repeat, but you know, staying in our comfort zone may not be God's will or his plan for us. Um, and um, so we need to really listen um, to his words and his calls and his suggestions and his direction. Um, because going out of our comfort zone can actually strengthen our relationship with Christ. Um, and a lot of you know me. Um, I do like my comfort zone. Um, but I'm kind of an out there person within my comfort zone, right? Um, and now High Plains, my the churches I've been serving uh, for... I'm trying to think here. Let's see, we got married in 2008. So since the middle of 2018, um, has been my comfort zone. Uh, my my Sallys, my Irene's, my uh, Christies, my Gladys's, my uh, Cheryl's, my Nancy's. I mean, I I could go on and on. You know, my my Joanne's and my Luann's and my Jeffs and my Dougs. I could go on forever and ever. Um, they have all been my comfort zone. We've become friends. Uh, we've become sisters and brothers in Christ. And um, I was established here at High Plains. Well, now after Sunday, I have to start all over again. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. So include me on your prayer list, okay? So um, anyway, let's get into our message. Uh, I love Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So I'm just going to tell you, uh, my message is not long today, but I might, you know, blab. Um, I am going to tell you until I got up early this morning, and started working on this piece. I had anxiety. I've been having trouble falling asleep. What do I have to do? What haven't I done? Um, what if they don't like me? What if I fail? All this stuff. But until I started working on this piece, I didn't have peace. But now, I'm so happy to be back on Coffee with Christ and back in the swing of things. Um, I, I have peace, just like that, just like that, you guys. So when I talk about comfort zones, we all, I think, have them. Um, some are way different than others. Um, and even though we don't admit it, we, we do all have some sort of comfort zone. Um, and so with that, naturally, we tend to gravitate 
toward places, situations, people that we feel safe around, right? We tend to feel comfortable in our day-to-day -day routines involving where we live. So that's another thing is I'm going to be 45 miles away half the week and down here half the week, okay? Two different communities. Where we work, changing people I'm going to be working with, um, but still working with God, common denominator. Um, and um, uh, who we spend our time with, okay? And so while this isn't necessarily a bad thing, sometimes our comfort zone and the same old, same old can hinder us from living life to our fullest potential. And we talked a little bit of this Oh, I don't know, three, four months ago, but, um, you know, the, the speaker yesterday, I love this. Okay. So she said, so, um, when I preach in the pulpit, I might tell people to go out and make disciples of all nations, go out and make fisher, fishers of men or whatever. Okay. And she goes, but do you think when they leave that building, they do it? <laughs> Oh my goodness, she hit the nail on the spot. So she says, why am I even preaching this, you know? Um, so my goal moving in the future is to really, really keep on this, follow up with my messages, whatever. And so I'm going to hopefully come back to you guys after this message because I know a lot of people in their comfort zone that are not gonna probably move after this message, but I might just have to keep pushing it on you a little bit. But not me, we're listening to God, okay? His plan for us. And so what are we supposed to do when God then calls us out of our comfort zone? Because as Christians, we should desire, I got a hair in my, uh, uh, face there. We should desire to have a relationship with Christ where we are continuously striving to grow closer to him. And that just might mean stepping outside of a familiar situation. For example, God may call us to move to a new place or he may call us to do something different in our career in order to make an impact on him. That's super important right there. Now, a common misconception um, is that we have to go to extravagant measures to make an impact for Christ. That's not true, okay? Sometimes it may be the case, but it is important to not overlook, overthink the small things, okay? Um, for example, stepping out of our comfort zone may mean starting a conversation with someone that we don't usually talk to. Or it could be as simple as reaching out to a co-worker by taking them to coffee. Um, or if you're not presently doing it, it could be um, just getting into the word of the Lord more yourself. Whether it be reading the Bible um, going online for devotions, uh, you know, just, just baby steps. It doesn't have to be huge, okay? But I, I, I found this and I like this. Life begins at the end of our comfort zone. Life begins at the end of our comfort zone. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. So... An Olympic coach and mentor once said that it's dangerous to live by the rules. He said that you end up in a rut and you feel like you can never break through into something new and different. And that is so true. And that can be when like depression sets in as well because you have nothing to look forward to. So now, like I, I talked about a little bit, there, there are risks involved in moving outside of our comfort zones. Um, we may fi uh, fear failing miserably. And then people will think, all in all, we are just a failure. 
We may fear that moving away from our safe zone of uh, friends and family com and community, that our new acquaintance will not like us or accept us. But we have to look at it um, as our glass half full because many times change is good for us. Now, staying in our comfort zone might not be God's plan for us and might not always be what's best for us. We can't decide that, so we need to listen. God knows what is best for us, and he will, if we listen, always lead us down the path that is best for us. And so maybe it's God's will that we change our attitude and lifestyle. What do you say? Nah, that's okay. I'll stay right where I'm at, where I feel comfortable. It's just easier that way. Do we ever consider that staying in our comfort zone may be settling for second best, my friends? So here was just an interesting little story I found. During the war, it's kind of... It's kind of different, but it really proves the point, okay? And I don't think it's a true story. During the war, a spy was captured and sentenced to death by a gener general in the Japanese army. Before carrying out the sentence, the general gave the spy a strange choice. He told him he could choose either the firing squad or that black door over there. The spy thought about the choice and he chose the firing squad and then within minutes of course he was dead now the general turned to his assistants and said they always prefer the known way to the unknown the assistant then asked the general well you know what's behind that black door freedom replied the general Behind the big black door is a passageway that leads outside, but only a few have been brave enough to see what was behind that door. Okay, I like that story. I like that story. Keep that one in your back pocket. So I'm sure some of you are aware, but otherwise, those that aren't, did you know there are situations in the Bible that moved people out of their comfort zones? For instance, Jesus taught Simon to step out of that zone. So if you look in Luke 5, um, after stepping into Simon's fishing boat and addressing the crowd, if you guys remember that on the, on the shore, Jesus asked Simon to pull out to the deep water away from the shore and begin to fish. But Simon begins making all these excuses, telling Jesus, um, you know, we've been fishing all day. We've tried that before. It didn't work. We didn't bring anything in. But Simon does give in by basically just saying, okay, if you insist. And so then when they pulled out to the deep water and cast their nets to the sides of the boat, the blessings began to come, filling the net. The blessings were so abundant that they needed to call a boat nearby to help them. The nets began breaking and the boats began to sink, but it all ended well. And they, the fish, and the boats made it safely to shore. And then, after that, they left everything and followed Jesus. Okay, yeah, that's leaving your comfort zone, right? At that time for them. But their comfort zone changed, right? Their comfort zone changed from being fishermen, having a depressing day at work, to pulling in all these fish, to all of a sudden finding their comfort zone in Jesus. Um, and Simon was a fisherman, and so we have to assume that he knew what he was doing. But many times, like Simon, we think we know what's best for us. And we build this knowledge by setting patterns that keep us comfortable, like tangible things such as employment, money, food, clothing, education, family, and friends, okay? And as I mentioned, there's nothing wrong with these things, but there is more in life to experience than what's just in our comfort zone. 
And we are poorer if we never stop and ask God to show us if there is more for us to do or experience. And that's exactly what I did. So first of all, before I accepted this call, tried to tried to find the answer myself to no avail. Nope. And then all of a sudden one night when I was down in Florida, it just came to me that this is what God wants me to do. But I did. I tried to fix everything myself and it didn't work. So let's not do that. Let's hand everything over to God. So for instance, when, you know, when Jesus called on these first disciples, he was asking them to leave everything behind, everything that had made them who they were up to that moment. Do we ever wonder, you know, what were they thinking? Did they ponder first whether or not to take the leap, you know, that would bind them in Christ? And to step away from their comfort zone, I wonder what they all went through. Probably the same thing that we do. So when we step outside of our comfort zones, we leave behind that perfect place, our own box, and begin to push and test the limits outside of our comfort zone. Um, and when God presents us with a need to leave our safety zone, we might ask ourselves questions, we might make excuses, and we might get really scared. What if this doesn't work? What if it backfires and falls right back on my face? What if I lose everything? What if it fails? It literally, my friends, takes a true leap of faith in God to step outside our comfort zones. Good test for you. So I'm not saying that being in a comfort zone is a negative aspect of life or that, you know, we should take risks just to leave our comfort zone. Because if you remember one time I did a message or maybe I told you, but um, I always tell people about the box, okay? Um, and inside the box, you keep the people that love you unconditionally. So you do still need to keep your box, but not comfort, uh, comfort zone, you know, box in life. Um, but you keep the people inside that box that love you unconditionally for who you were, who you are, and that you would never have to worry about, um, ever deceiving you or letting you down. Others, you just keep outside the box. You can communicate with them. You can be nice to them, um, whatever, but you just don't have them inside your box, okay? Um, but the main thing is we should never, like I said, take risks just to leave our comfort zones. Um, we should never do that without prayer and conversation with God. We should pray that he shows us what he wants for our life. Because he has a plan for all of us, okay? When we completely, completely, that's the word, okay? Not just half-assed. When we completely give our hearts to God, he can do amazing things through us and through our life. Um, all we have to do is listen for his call and be willing to respond in faithfulness. And in addition, living for Christ often requires us to do things that go against maybe today's culture. While this may seem super scary, we can always turn to God and rely on his strength to make it through. So moving forward, my friends, I encourage you to not be afraid of stepping outside of your comfort zone, okay? When you know God is calling you to do something new, ask him to give you strength to accomplish what he has called you to do. And in the end, doing something outside of your comfort zone can be very rewarding. If I can do it, you can do it. So I needed this today, my friends. Um, 
yes, I needed this today. Um, and I'm so glad that I got up early and got back on the computer and started um, doing my research again. Boy, there's nothing like filling yourself back up with the word. You know, when you're on vacation, sometimes you don't get into the word as much. Yeah, I know. I know. Sorry about that. Um, but it sure feels good to come back to it. So anyway, um, with that, let us all join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, <clears throat> and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, guys... Cloudy out here today, but God bless our farm. God bless you guys wherever you are. I forgot to say that. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon each and every one of you in this whole entire world with his favor and give us all his amazing peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you so much guys for coming back and being patient and putting up with me. Um, I will see you next Wednesday, um, but I may be at um, the Parsonage. Have a great weekend. Um, God bless you and bye for now.